check it out. We've got three big sedans, and these are most certainly your father's cars, the four Taurus. Over here, we have the brand new restyled Chrysler 300S in this case, and right here, the Chevy Impala. So what do these three cars have in common? Well, obviously, they're big, classic American sedans, and we're gonna take them for a quick spin, coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Taurus has been around the longest, at least style-wise. It's swoopy, it's sleek, and dare I say, the most European of the three. Now, the Chrysler is interesting because it's refreshed for 2015, and basically that means there's a new fascia, a 33% larger grille, and a more in-your-face attitude. The Impala has been around a couple years, but it has the most sculptured look, the biggest haunches, perhaps the car that's trying to look the most like the relative Camaro version of this. All in all, all three cars are handsome, all three cars are sleek, and all three cars are very American. I suspect you'll like the car based on what brand you like the most. All right, guys, I am in the Impala. Classic American sedan, but this may surprise you, a classic front-wheel drive American sedan. So let's just stuff uh, Lorton. See how it does. Oh yeah, a lot of front wheel spin. <laughs> There's something just unnatural about being pulled as opposed to being pushed, especially in a big four-door sedan. I know that sounds maybe trite and goofy, but it's true. I like the fact that in the Chrysler, you're being pushed and you're not being pulled by the front wheel drive wheels of the car. And let's face it, most people probably don't care about front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. To them, it's about fuel economy. And this Impala gets uh, 22 MPG combined, which is actually a very remarkable number for such a big and powerful car. Wow, look at all that, uh, yeah, plastic. This Chevy 3.6 liter puts out 305 horsepower, making it the most powerful of the bunch. <laughs> But let's face it, they're all right around 300 horsepower. The biggest difference between all three cars is the Chrysler has an eight-speed transmission, while the Impala and the Taurus have six-speed transmission. All in all, they're very competitive. It also costs, let's find the cost here. I've got the Monroni right here, and that number is 41,230. Now that's probably not as useful as you might think because we're not comparing apples to apples. While these cars have similar powertrains, they do not have several levels of equipment. And in this quick take, we're not going to go into like apples to apples comparison. Inside the Impala, it's also very modern, very swoopy, very luxurious. I'm not a big fan of this steering wheel. There's just something that's kind of funky about it. But in general, this is a very nice place to spend time. Everything I touch is soft. You've got this really nice stitching. Once again, a big infotainment screen. All in all, it is very remarkable how similar and how competitive these three big American sedans are. How does it drive? It drives great. Big wheelbase, comfortable ride. You know, I would say you'd be hard pressed to find fault with the way any of these cars behave on the road. And 
unlike the Taurus, this Impel has been recently refreshed. I believe it's about two years that they uh, redid it. Uh, and it's done really well. You know, this used to be kind of a, um, well, let's say it, rent-a-car special. And since they've taken it up in terms of refinement and development, just listen how quiet it is in here. It's gotten to be much more than just a rent-a-car. Everything about this car feels and smells of quality. And that's why this segment is so, so competitive because it is difficult to find, at least nowadays, a car that isn't competitive. The market would just tear you up. And it really becomes about what you want in a car. Do you want front wheel drive? Do you want a V8? Do you want a turbocharger? And like ice cream, these cars offer a different flavor of all three of those things. Here we go, floored. It sounds good. There's a little bit of that Camaro slash Corvette DNA in this car, and that's what I like about the Impala. It's very sporty indeed. If you can get past the fact that it's a front wheel drive layout as opposed to a rear wheel drive layout. But you know what? The some of the best hot hatches are also front wheel drive, so yeah, you can live with it. It's just in a big sedan. I kind of like the back wheels pushing the car instead of the front wheels pulling it. Just like the flavors of ice cream, there are significant differences between all three of these cars. The Taurus is front wheel drive with an optional turbocharged engine. The Chrysler, it probably comes in the most different variants. You can get a six cylinder rear wheel drive platform or you can get a six cylinder all wheel drive platform or you can get this one which is the rear wheel drive Hemi V8, the only one with a V8. And the Impala, once again, we're at a front wheel drive car. So really it's like ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. It really depends what your taste is. Yep. I'd say that's about 3,000 RPM as well. So all these cars do not let you rev the, you know what, out of it. All right, I am in the Ford Taurus which has a distinction of being the least expensive of the three. We are looking at a base price of 2937, but an as tested price of 34,505. So it is by far the least expensive. And also the oldest. And it's starting to show its age a little bit. Not so much on the interior, but I think kind of just the way that it's put together. The other two feel a little bit more solid. This feels a little bit less tight. It's remarkable how similar these cars are. For instance, the Ford Taurus has a 3.5 liter V6 that produces 290 horsepower. What's different about this car is that it comes standard with a six speed automatic transmission, unlike the Chrysler, which now has an eight speed. In terms of driving dynamics, there's not much steering feel. There's not a lot of um, excitement. But then again, this isn't the uh, EcoBoost. This is the V6. Having said that, it's aged relatively well. The interior still looks modern and comfortable and easy on the eyes. You know, I really like the interior of the Taurus. It is actually dated very well. It's sleek, it's swoopy, it's comfortable. Everything I touch for the most part is soft, even though there are some relatively inexpensive plastics to be had. My biggest concern is right there. It's Ford's sync system. Now they're changing it up, but... This is still one of the most user-unfriendly systems in the business, and that would be the biggest demerit, in my mind, to the Ford Taurus. 
keep in mind that we're not comparing apples to apples because it's almost impossible to get cars that directly compete. And I'm only taking these cars on a very short loop. I'm behind the wheel maybe 10 minutes. So these are just very brief initial impressions. Having said that, I have driven a lot of these cars and spent a lot of time behind both the Taurus and the Impala. Not so much with the Chrysler 300, at least not in the new 2015 version. The interior of the 300 is a little bit more, well, retro may not be the right word, but let's call it classic. Unlike the Ford, which is swoopy and modern, this has a more traditional layout, even though it does have my favorite infotainment system, Chrysler's Uconnect, with this 8.3 inch screen is one of the best in the business. So I have to give it a lot of kudos for having a system that's very easy to use and very intuitive. mistaken that you're driving a big, powerful, and heavy American car. And that's good because it's very relaxed, it's very uh, poised, and even though 21 mpg for an all-wheel drive car may seem like, well, not the greatest number, it's still very, very impressive indeed. I said these cars were remarkably similar, and they are. So I'm not going to show you what's under the hood of this Chrysler 300 because this has the optional Hemi, and it doesn't directly compete with the other two cars. But the base version of this is a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine, which does compete, and that puts out 300 horsepower. And unlike the Ford, this one's paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. So it does have a lot of the best of American brand values, and at the same time, you still get relatively good gas mileage, but you pay for it. You know, this is a beautiful interior. Everything feels very expensive, but at an Ant's tested price of 45675 it's also the most expensive of the three. It'd be really fun to be able to get like three stripped out versions of these cars and really compare them head to head because I'm sure, I'm sure the manufacturers know exactly what each car has and what each car doesn't have when it comes to accessories. Check it out! Only goes to 4000 it won't let me go any higher. How about if I put a neutral? Let's try that. Neutral. 4,000. Same deal. For my money, there's no doubt. I would buy this car, but that's because I'm from Colorado and I need all-wheel drive. is available in the all-wheel drive but you have to step up to the SHO version and that gets once again out of the range of the cars that we're talking about so for my money I'd probably get this one because I like the all-wheel drive <laughs> chocolate strawberry and vanilla that's probably the best way in my mind to describe these three cars because it really is about what flavor you like. The Impala has the most sporty, sculpted sports car looks. This of course is all about attitude, in your face. And the Ford, that is perhaps the most European, the most sleek of all three of them. At the end of the day, I've only had a few minutes behind the wheel of all three, so it wouldn't be fair to you and it certainly wouldn't be fair to the manufacturers to pick a winner. It really depends on whether you like strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla ice cream. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane Car. Check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and really cool mashup reviews. Ciao!